and began to speak with other tongues. You can see that tongues is associated with being filled with the Holy Ghost. They were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit, they began to speak as the Spirit gave to them the utterance. So this is a Holy Spirit utterance. It's coming from Him. This is not an utterance that's coming from your intellect. It is not an utterance that's coming from your mind. It's not an utterance that came from something you learned. You know, you took French, so now, you know, you start speaking French. You know, you, 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 you knew how to do that. This is an utterance that comes from the Holy Spirit, that's given to you from the Holy Spirit. It's your prayer language that comes from Him. It's your, it's your language that He gives you. You get the Holy Spirit and begin to speak in other tongues. You get Now, you know, just like a baby, you know, you didn't come out the room and say, what's up, Mom and Dad, what we got to eat? You started off with, with, with syllables, right? And that's what you have to explain to Christians, you know. It's like, you know, you may come out with a couple of syllables here, and you, as you go before God with that, your language begins to grow. It begins to build your faith. You begin to get more. And the next thing you know, you're talking fluently in a language that you didn't go to school to learn. And, um, you know, we'll see in a moment how out of all those people who were there in Acts when they, when they did this. 1 Corinthians 2.14. Uh, we already read that. Uh, yeah, let's go. 1 Corinthians 2.14. And then uh, I don't want to rush because this is pretty important. I just want to hurry and get to the context of putting all this together. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit. All right, the natural man doesn't receive the things of the Spirit. Some guy says, well, that's confusing to me, or I don't believe that. That's because you're carnal. Carnal, carnal means of the five senses. It means of the five senses. A person's carnal because everything they choose to believe or not believe goes through the filter of their eye gate, their ear gate, what they can smell, what they can see, what they can touch. So if they can't smell it, see it, hear it, touch it, then it's not real. Because a carnal man says, unless I can comprehend with my senses, then it's not real. And so basically he's saying a natural man is not going to receive the Spirit of God because he, he's trying to filter all of this information through the natural realm. And this isn't natural, you know? And so you're trying to say, well, I never forget when they lay, pr lay, put hands on me and talk about, well, speak. And then I, I got kind of upset. I was like, well, I don't know how to speak but one language. English, and you know, the guy was like, in the name of Jesus, then they start casting devils out. Devil come out, and I'm like, dude, ain't got no devil in me, and it must have been the devil because I was freaking out, you know. I was, and it, it was crazy. It, it took me, a, it just should not have taken me that long, but my, I was trying to filter everything. It's like, you're asking me to open my mouth and say something that I don't know. And all, you, so if I'm going to open my mouth, I can only speak here. And he was like, no, shut your mind and your natural out and trust God. And when the Spirit gives you utterance, just speak as the Spirit by faith to do that. And I'll never forget it. I opened my mouth up and I said, La. <laughs> that was it. I'm like, for real? La? And, and I just kind of, you know, la, la, la. You know, fa, la, 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 la. And I was just kind of freaking like, yeah, but, but the, I felt the presence of God come over me. And I'm like, la, 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 la. And I was like, what was that? I was like, whoa. And, and, and at the same time, when that happened, something came over my physical body. I knew this was greater than my, my brain. And, and I was like, whoa. It was like a shock through my entire being. And I'm like, la, 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 la. So all I knew is if I say that la, la enough, something would kick in. And I took that la, I took that la, la. That's the only thing I had, la, la. I took that baby home. And it was one, one, one night I was praying, la, 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 I was like, I'm not stopping this time. I'm just going to let that baby flow. I prayed for I don't know how long. I was like, whoa, I got me a language. I wore that baby out, boy. And I, and I was, I would, could not steal through the natural. How do I explain this through the natural? And I knew one day I would have to teach this and teach people how to, how to teach people to receive the Holy Spirit. But at that time, my natural man almost kept me from something that was spiritual. And that's what he was saying. But the natural man will not receive the things of the Spirit of God. Why? Because they're foolishness unto him. I sat there and thought, this is crazy. This is, this is crazy, you know. I'm thinking, 
this is a cult or something. This is stupid. Nobody does this. And I found out that a lot of people did that. I just didn't know how to do it. And man, it was foolish. He says, neither can, 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 neither can he know them because they are what? Spiritually discerned. Spiritually discerned. And it, it requires faith to walk in spiritual things. And that's what was required of me that night was faith to walk in something that was a spiritual thing. Uh, now look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and 13. Now, this is, this is important. All these things are important. I'm trying to give you enough scriptures to deal with all the questions that may come up after this over with, or some people asking you questions. 1 Corinthians 14, 13 says, Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. And so I'm like, if I'm saying all this wise stuff, sure would like to know some of it. So um, I was trained. Well, I'm going to pray in tongues. And afterwards, I'm going to say, Lord, give me the interpretation of that. And, and sometimes that interpretation will come to me unexpected. I'm in a meeting, and we're trying to figure out something, and bam, the light shows on. You know, knowledge is one thing, but wisdom is the ability to use that knowledge. And what he'll do is shine the light on the knowledge that you have accumulated somewhere and assimilated together, and you'll see things you never, you never saw before. And it was amazing to me, I would be sitting there dealing with some pretty rough issues, issues that I've been told I gave the answer to, and people had to get several degrees to be able to give that answer. But that came by the Holy Spirit. And I know it did because I just didn't know it except when it, the Holy Spirit has, an, has a tendency to take something complex and make it like common sense when it gets to you. What is that called? Revelation. He just begins to reveal things to you, and you know you just got it by the Holy Spirit. Now, what I'm talking about, you're never going to know about it unless you're willing to live, live this life and believe this life and, and, and fellowship with him. Other than that, it'll be foolishness to you. You'll laugh at it. You'll think this is ridiculous. This is the craziest thing I've ever heard. The only problem is, is I'm reading all of this out of the Bible. <laughs> so the next thing you're going to have to deal with is all that stuff that I think is crazy and funny, it came from the Scripture. So what do you do with it? You're going to take your eraser and erase that like you've erased a whole lot of other things in your life? Or you're going to finally sit down and say, you know, there's something to this. This may be the missing link to my life. Amen? Now, uh, so wherefore let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. An unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. Now, I get people who say, well, you know, tongues is a language. You're exactly right. Let's go to Acts chapter 2, verses 4 through 13 and look at all the people who were there. Acts chapter 2. Uh, verses, what I say, 3 through 13? 4 through 13. I'll show you this, and then we will, um, we will rock and roll on 1 Corinthians 14. All right. Uh, 4 says, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. Now, this is the day of Pentecost that happened, so here's what happened then. Look at verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, uh, very educated men, very, you know, prominent men, out of every nation under heaven at that time. That's pretty strong. All right? Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. So all those people that were there... All of this stuff that was going on on, on the day of Pentecost in the upper room, they heard their language being spoke. But now watch this next verse. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans uneducated people? There's no way they're supposed to know how to speak our language. These are uneducated people, but the Holy Ghost is on them. Honey, don't let your education ever put you down because when you got the Holy Ghost he'll bring you above somebody else's degree you just make sure you get that HG degree and that BA degree that born again degree and that Holy Ghost degree amen and they were all amazed back and they were all amazed because uh, saying one to another behold are not all these which speak Galileans 
So get, get a hold of what this tongue is. It's not just gibber and babble. You're going to be speaking a language of somebody. And you may never know. There may be ancient languages that have come up. There may be languages that you can't find today uh, that are rare languages. And that's why people, you know, you, you, it's just, I mean, listen to people when they're praying in the Spirit and stuff like that. You, you can hear. Sometimes you might even be able to pick up some familiar languages and stuff. You know, I heard, a, I heard a, a, an Asian woman speak in Spanish one time. And she was praying in tongues and, and praying before God. Um, look at the next verse here. And so he's going to give a list of now. And how, and how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? How do we hear every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Verse 9. And he started giving a list of where all these different people came from. Look at verse 10. There's like 13 of these folks that showed up. And look at verse 11. Um, look at that. And he says, and we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. So they were interpreting what they were hearing and what they heard in their own tongue was the wonderful works of God. Verse 12, and they were all amazed and, they, and, and were in doubt, saying one to another, see, there's always going to be somebody in doubt, what meaneth this? <laughs> what meaneth this? You know, if I were to begin to prophesy in tongues and you, you're not aware that I'm going to follow up with an interpretation, you may, what meaneth this? And you think, oh, that's strange or that's occultic and... And, and, and that's weird and all that other kind of same thing. And, and man, we, we, have, we have just bought the lie that religion gave us. And we got a book to go and read it, but won't nobody read it. Thank God you got a church where you got pastors and stuff that'll teach this kind of stuff and take, it, take their time and just show you where it is. And then you got to decide what you're going to do with it. But I am not living my life in this crazy world without the gift of speaking in tongues. Because there's too much going on I don't know about. But when I pray in the Holy Ghost, it all seemed to work out just fine. Amen. 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 Yes. Verse 13, others mocking, saying, these men are full of new wine. So he had two groups of people, those who went away amazed at what was happening, and another one that's saying, man, these people drunk. They tripping. <laughs> they tripping. And so you know what's happened? You can hardly go into churches right now and, and even see the, the exercise of speaking in tongues because people are afraid of it. They don't want to be afraid of being accused of being weird or, oh, they drunk or they tripping. And I'll be on TV sometimes and I'll be preaching sometimes. I, I slip up in tongues. I, I oh my, I'm, that's just who I am. I was in class when I was teaching in high school. I, I taught um, social sciences from 10th grade to 12th grade. I, I didn't do it real long. But I was teaching world history. And... <laughs> And I got up in the middle of the class, and I was so excited about being to talk about the authentic historical accounts of the Apostle Paul and Jesus. And, and I stood up for the class, and I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I went off. I didn't mean to do that. I was like, oh, no, cool, brother. Oh, the. and then they said, what was that night? And they were taking over. <laughs> nah, don't even worry about that. Let's just go to something else. You understand? And I was, I, was just, I was just amazed. I've seen it work some amazing things. Uh, as a therapist, I had uh, a patient who, it was pretty messed up. This was, the, it was bipolarism now, but it was um, uh, a psychotic episodes that came from so much acid and stuff and just ruined itself. And basically, you know, it, that's just basically how he was going to be. And he came and asked me, he said, well, is there any hope or anything that can be done? He says, I just feel like there's something that somebody's not telling me. <laughs> and this was just against every protocol that existed. And I, I pulled him into one of the rooms and I said, listen, uh, what I'm about to show you and tell you, you can't tell anybody. <laughs> and I said, um, you're born again, because I led him to the Lord and got born again. I said, but I did leave something out. You didn't get baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence speaking in tongues. He said, what's that? And I went through the scriptures and showed him. And he was like, I can have that? I said, yeah, you can have him if you want him. And I said, uh, okay, now lift your hands up. And I said, now try to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so he lifted his hands up and, I, 
And I said, in the name of Jesus, he repeated to me, he said, Father, and the Father, you know, give me the Holy Spirit, you know, with the evidence speaking in tongues. And I said, I'm going to lay my hands on you and you just go ahead and receive. And I laid my hands on him. I mean, I, as soon as my hand got near his hair, he said, oh, he could not. He was just like, this is the greatest, woo! And he just kept walking around, Brandon Thomas, woo! And I'm thinking, that I might as well go ahead and pack my bags. I'm out of here. <laughs> the thing that happened, though, he began to make supernatural progress that his doctors couldn't explain. To the point where somebody who was supposed to stay in much longer ended up being discharged. And at the interview that he left, he says, could you just tell me what happened? It was just like a, a turnaround. What happened? He said, Creflo Dollar ministered the baptism of the Holy Spirit to me. <laughs> oh, man. Medical director called me up in his office, and he says, you know, we really we don't usually do that. I said, yeah, I, I, I know. I mean, it's been nice knowing you. He says, no, that's not what I'm going to do. He said, uh, you think you can do that again? I said, what are you talking about? He says, no, I can't make people come, but we can make it optional. And I'll give you a group. You can do whatever you did with him, with them. And it'll just be between me and you. I said, I can sure do that for you. I can make that happen. Because, and we had the highest discharge success rate. And to this point, they still don't know that it was because I was laying hands on them and getting them praying the Holy Ghost. And, and the power of the Holy Spirit, it changes your life. It, it, it builds you up in your spirit strong, in your soul peace, rest, and in your physical body, it will literally start your uh, uh, strengthen in your immunity system, and it'll build your Im immune system up because you're spending time praying in the Holy Spirit. It has health benefits as well. Amen. And what I'm telling you, you won't ever know until you do it. Amen. 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 Now. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, and now let's put all of this in context. See, the Holy Spirit has come to tell you and me everything we need to know to walk in the fullness of God's plan for our lives. So let's look at this in context and um, show you some things. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. Now, 1 Corinthians 14 and 1 is comparing the gift of prophecy with the gift of speaking in tongues. And basically what he is saying is, rather than you edifying yourself, you, I want you to make sure you edify others when you're in the church. And he's not saying that prophecy is greater than tongues, uh, except when it comes to giving people interpretation and understanding, okay? So now watch this, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. So we're going to walk in love, de desire spiritual gifts. He says, not that tongues is better, but I would rather you prophesy because nobody will understand or be edified if you speak in tongues in a public place and they don't understand the language you're speaking. Verse 2, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, not unknown, to, it's, it's unknown to you, but it, somebody somewhere may know it. it's unknown to you. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God, for no man understandeth him, how be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. That word mystery is defined as hidden secrets or wisdom not made obvious to, to your mind. I think the Amplified says that. Go to the Amplified in this real quick. We'll go back and forth to the King James and Amplified. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2 in the Amplified literally breaks that, that last part down. He says, um, for no one understands or catches his meaning because in the Holy Spirit he utters secret truths and hidden things not obvious to the understanding. Secret truths. Think of that. How many of you want to know the secret of something? Secret truths and hidden things that are not made obvious to your understanding. That comes when you speak in tongues. Verse 3, King James. But he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. So this is the key. If, I, if somebody gives you a prophecy, it should do three things. It should build you up, edify, it should exhort you, and it should comfort you. If somebody's prophesying over you something that doesn't build you up, that doesn't exhort you, and that doesn't comfort you, that it prophecy didn't come from God. I prophesy to you that you're going to fall dead today. Dude, you ain't even heard from God. Just go and get on out of my face. 
No, it has to bring edification and comfort, okay? And if it doesn't bring those three things, you don't need to receive it. There's some things on the inside of you. Those things are like a baby trying to kick to get out. God has given us greatness to experience and share. Our assignment is to believe it. I believe that Jesus believes I'm righteous. So I believe I'm righteous. I believe that Jesus believes that I'm prosperous. So I believe I'm prosperous. <laughs> so if you ever have a hard time believing, just believe what Jesus believed. In the five-message series, Holy Spirit, The Solution to Unbelief, Creflo Dollar explains the importance of our belief in Christ and the role of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, has accepted full responsibility for your change. When you order Holy Spirit, The Solution to Unbelief, for a love gift of $30 or more, get Tappy Dollar's latest book, The Grace of Mutual Submission, for a love gift of $15. Call or go online to order. Creflo and Taffy Dollar are coming to Charlotte, North Carolina for the Change Experience Friday, June 8th. Jesus has already finished. Take your healing. Take your deliverance. Take your prosperity. Take it. Get ready for three sessions of inspirational teaching, healing, and a transformational experience. When you have a problem with your faith, remember his faith. Hear about Pastor Taffy's radical revolution at 2 p.m. God has a prize for you in 2018 that's going to blow your wildest dreams. God's going to show you stuff that you've been praying for because he's the God of the surprise. Hallelujah. This is a free event, but seating is limited. See Creflo and Taffy Dollar live at the Change Experience in Charlotte, North Carolina, Friday, June 8th at the Embassy Suite Charlotte Concord Golf Resort and Spa. Save your seat now at CreflodollarMinistries.org. If you're looking for a church home and want to stay connected to Creflo Dollar Ministries, join us at a World Changers Fellowship Church in your area. Visit us online at CreflodollarMinistries.org. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. You're tuned in to Life Television Network, bringing you nothing but the best in anointed teaching, preaching, and gospel music. Are you looking for an accredited school to enroll your child in? If so, then Life Institute Christian School is indeed your school. Life Institute Christian School serves grades K-12 and utilizes an individualized accelerated Christian education curriculum that allows the student to achieve attainable educational goals at his or her own pace. Allow your child to obtain a valuable education here at Life Institute Christian School on the campus of Word of Life Community Church. For more information about the school, call 251-456-2652. Word of Life Learning Institute is more than just a daycare. We specialize in the overall development of your child. We utilize an accelerated Christian education curriculum that teaches your children the basics they need for a strong academic future. We provide nursery through K-5 after school care and before and after school transportation. For more information, call 251-456-2650. Word of Life Learning Institute for learning and caring. Give attention to the Word of God. Pay attention to it and receive it and take it. No one is God talking to you. The first step to receiving your healing is to know and believe it is God's will for you to be healed. Join Kenneth and Gloria Copeland today on the Believer's Voice of Victory from their prayer cabin in southwest Arkansas. Now, here are Kenneth and Gloria. 
Hello, everybody. We're Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, and this is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Let's have a word of prayer, and we get right into today's Bible lesson. Father, we thank you. We praise you and give you honor and glory. We worship you, sir, and we thank you for your word. Thank you. We thank you for your healing power. In Jesus' name, we receive it today, and we give you the the praise and the honor and Thank the glory you, for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Gloria. Yes, sir. Healing is good. Healing is good. Healing is good. Healing is the children's bread. Healing is the children's bread. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. We're talking about healing. And uh, where am I supposed to look, Tim? Over here? Good. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> let's go back to our... Our, 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 the fourth chapter of Proverbs again today. I've learned over the years. I heard Brother Hagin say this, and I, and uh, and then I over the last 51 years we've been in the ministry, uh, I've seen this to be true. That the number one problem in receiving healing is, is it God's will? Is it God's will today? Is it God's will for me? Or you could say unbelief. Well, yeah, but if you sure. don't know it's God's will, you can't believe. And it. you ever you ever notice that people would uh, they say, "Well, I know God's he God heals," and, and, and I'm sure of that. But I just don't know uh, uh, whether He heals everybody or not. Now, somebody that says that, it would be very right. rare. <laughs> now, you and I would say this. But it would be very rare to hear them say that, but I'm one of the ones that if he does. If he heals anybody, he <laughs> Yeah, but, but that, That's see, that doesn't, that doesn't go along with that. That goes along with doubt. I doubt whether it's his will to heal me. It is his will for every living thing to be well. That's right. I'm he is the author of wellness. He has absolutely no purpose in you being sick. That's right. So let's go to, uh, to Proverbs chapter 4 once again. And, and I want you to remind the people again here, Gloria, what you said yesterday. My son, attend to my words. Now read that again. My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear unto... I'm talking about what you put in oh, your notes over there. The law of receiving. The, yeah. Attend to, give attention to the Word of God is the law of receiving, whether it's finances, whether it's uh, your healing, whatever it is. Give attention to the Word of God. Pay attention to it and receive it and take it. No one is God talking to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory it has God. to become a vital part of your thinking, a vital talk, part yeah. of your yeah. uh, of your daily speech. Amen. So, in other words, my son, put my word first place in your life, or final authority. Now, it looks like this, but you said this. Verse 21 goes as far to say... Let them not depart from your eyes. That's pretty much all the time. That's all the time, yeah. yeah. And, and keep them in the midst of your heart. Yeah, that's so how you keep I, it. So I wanted you to see this. They <clears throat> are life mm -hmm. unto those that find them or unto those that seek them and look at them and believe them and meditate on them, and, and say them, them, and put it first place in your life. And health, the cross-reference says, medicine to all their flesh. Now then, um, has the word changed? No. Jesus Christ, the Word of God, is the same yesterday, today, today and? and forever. Yes. This book is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. His word 
not to become healing to your flesh would have to lose its power. Yes, but Brother Copeland, um, now you see that was a different dispensation. No, it wasn't. Dispensations don't have anything to do with this. Right. This has to do with the Word of God. It hasn't to do with it. Now, there, right. there are dispensations. Don't misunderstand me. But healing is in every dispensation. And God's Word doesn't change. No. In any dispensation. No, neither does Jesus. That's right. He, he's the healer yesterday. He's the healer today. And he'll be the healer tomorrow. That's right. Now then, let's talk about is it... God's will. Did now, we talk I, about verse 23? That's so important. About keep your heart, because that's, you, that's where it is. Protected. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it, out of your heart are the issues of life. How do you keep your heart? Attend to the Word of God. Keep that Word going in keep your eyes, in, there, in your the, ears. Feed on it. in your heart. Uh, was it Matthew 4, 4, when Jesus said, Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every, every word, word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Father? What are the issues of life? Look that word up. It's talking about forces, spiritual forces. Amen. Faith is a spiritual force. That's right. Wisdom is a spiritual force. Understanding. And you're going to get that by attending to the Word to the of word. God and taking it and doing it. Yeah, amen. 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 I, I got this out of Keith Moore's book, God's Will. That is so powerful. To heal. I heard you give that the other day. It's oh, so I'm telling you. And that's all. Oh, listen. Thank you, Keith. You talk about a powerful book. It, it is just Oh, man, I, you get healed just reading that book. Yeah. Now, this is what Brother Keith said. Now, let, let, me, talk, let me tell you something about Keith Moore, those of you that are not acquainted with his, with his ministry. He spent 17 years at Brother Hagin's side in healing school at Ramah. And Keith taught it. Day in, day out, he taught and watched people get receive miracles. Mm -hmm. Oh, my, my, my. Um, he wrote the song, The Glory's Here, The Glory's Here. Reach up and take it, it's mine, I take it now. Yeah. And he wrote that from a miracle that happened in healing school. There was a woman on her way uh, to the to Mayo Clinic. She had been operated on, and somehow or another, uh, they, they, they slipped and slit her esophagus. Mm -hmm. And she had been, I, I believe, it seemed to me like uh, 11 corrective surgeries had been done, and she's on her way to males. To, to, and she hadn't eaten any solid food in months. They just had a feeding tube up her nose. Well, when she came in there, they didn't, they didn't know what the was. She just had this tube up her nose. And Brother Hagin's just teaching on Mark 11, 23 and 24 and 25, believe you receive when you pray. It's that simple. Just believe that you receive it. And uh, so uh, she, just, she just went like this. She took it. That's all she did. She, I take it. And Keith wrote that song, The Glory is Here, I Take It Now. And, uh, and Brother Hagin's talking about the glory and so forth. She just reached up and did this and pulled that tube out. Praise God. Well, <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, oh, Lord Jesus. She came back and gave her testimony. Oh, my. <laughs> She went across the street. She hasn't eaten anything but liquids in months. Months, uh, not months. Months would be a bad enough. Months, a uh, bunch of months. <laughs> I don't remember how long. It, several months. She hadn't had anything but liquid. She went across the street to a Mexican restaurant. I think it's a, uh, anyway, I don't remember the name of it. Monterey House. Went right straight across the street, ate two Mexican dinners. 
came in there, and Brother Hagin said, boy, she must have been healed. And lived to tell And about. was just healed and well and just, just thrilled to come back over there, you know, praising God after eating two Mexican dinners. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that's how simple it is. She just believed what Brother Hagin was teaching. Acted on it. She just reached him and said, I take it now. It's mine. I take it now. But now, she, she did that after hearing the word. Now, that's the environment that's in right. which Keith Moore ministered 17 years. You'd think a man would know something about healing, wouldn't you? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Now, Keith said, how do we know whether it's God's will to heal us or not? It makes little difference what others say about it. What did he say about it? Right. Remember that God is no respecter of persons, and he never changes. So what he said to them yesterday, he is saying to you today. God's word is God speaking to me. These statements are taken directly from the Bible with little or no variation. The verbs and construction have been changed to apply to you personally and to sum up the thoughts in some instances. Also, many of these statements are prefaced by phrases like, if you walk in my commandments, if you believe, obey, and so forth. What did God say? A hundred and one things God said. God said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Exodus 15:26. Your days shall be uh, 120 years, Genesis 6-3. You shall be buried in a good old age, Genesis 15-15. Oh, you shall come to your grave in a full age, as, like as a shock of corn cometh in his season, Job 5-26. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you, Exodus 12-13. I'll take sickness from the midst of you, and the number of your days I will fulfill, Exodus 23, 25, and 26. I, I, I quote that scripture almost every day. Now, the others that I just said earlier, I, I quote every day. But standing there in front of the mirror, oh, he's taking sickness from the midst That's of me, right. and the length of my days he'll fulfill. Praise God. What are the lengths of my days? 120 years. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I will not put any of the diseases you're afraid of on you, but I'll take all sickness away from you. Deuteronomy 7:15. It'll be well with you, and your days shall be multiplied and prolonged as the days of heaven on the earth. Deuteronomy 11:9 and, and through 21. I turned the curse into a blessing unto you because I love you. Deuteronomy 23:5 and Nehemiah 13:2. You know, Ken, that's a great scripture on prolong. The number of your days I will prolong. That means add to it. That yeah, means yeah. Longer, longer, longer. It means it's it, it, it it's not anti. It's pro. It's pro for long life. Mm -hmm. God, 120 years is the only lifespan that God put that God said and put in the word. That 70 or 80 was a curse that came on the Israelites in the wilderness yeah. because of disobedience. And they said, we're going to die in the desert. They kept saying it. Well, what is God going to do? It, I mean, they kept saying it. They didn't say what he said. They kept saying what they said. And there are spiritual laws involved there. It had to come to pass. That's right. Wow. That's right. That's good. I have redeemed you from every sickness and every plague. Glory to God. 28, 61 and Galatians 3, 13. As your days, so shall your strength be. I like that one. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 33, 25. I have found a ransom for you. Your flesh shall be fresher than a child's, and you shall return to the days of your youth. Job 33, 24 and 25. I have healed you and brought up your soul from the grave. I've kept you alive from going down into the pit. Mm. Psalm 31 and 2. I'll give you strength and bless you with peace. Whoa. I'll give you strength and bless you with peace. Psalm 29, 11. I'll preserve you and keep you alive. Psalm 41, 2. 
What scriptures? Hallelujah. I will strengthen you upon the bed of languishing. I will turn all your bed in your sickness. Psalm 41, 3. I am the health of your countenance and your God. Psalm 43, 5. No plague shall come nigh your dwelling. Psalm 91, 10. Whoa, that's good. Isn't it? No yeah. plague. No plague. And, and no I'm, plague that will come word nigh languishing, your that means you're you're down under. I mean, yeah. you, you've gotten weak. You, it's, it's had an effect on you already. Uh, well, where, where I understand it in the, in the Hebrew, it's it's lang it's long term sickness, yeah. Yeah. languishing in yeah. sickness and disease. So don't quit believing God. I will satisfy you with long life. Psalm ninety one sixteen. I heal all your diseases. Psalm one o three three. I sent my word and heals you and delivered you from your destruction. Psalm 107.20. You shall not die, but live and declare my works. Psalm 118.7. I heal your broken heart and bind up your wounds. Psalm 147.3. The years of your life shall be many. Proverbs 4.10. <clears throat> Trusting me brings health to your navel and marrow to your bones. Glory to God. Hey, that bones. stops osteoporosis right, right there. That That's stops right. it right there. L listen to that. Trusting me brings health to your navel and marrow to your bones. That gets rid of leukemia. I think navel stands for your inward part. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 it's all of your vital organs. Yeah. <clears throat> and, Praise God. Uh, where was I now? My words are life to you and health and medicine to all your flesh. Proverbs 4.22. My good report makes your bones fat. Proverbs 15.30. My pleasant words are sweet to your soul and health to your bones. Boy, there's a bunch of bone scriptures right there. You have anything wrong with your bones? Grab it, darling. Take it. Say, that's mine. I take it now. God, save me. God is talking to you. His word is speaking to you. My pleasant words are sweet to your soul and health to your bones, Proverbs 16, 24. My joy is your strength. A merry heart does good like a medicine. Ha, 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 glory to God. Just start laughing right now. No, Me so I think you could say a sad heart, a sad countenance, uh, you know, it's sorrow. Just the depression. It's just the opposite. Sorrow and depression. But then he bore our sorrows and griefs. So there's no use of being that way. No, that's right. The eyes of the blind shall be open. The eyes of them that see shall not be dim. Isaiah 32, 3 and 35, 5. Amen. The ears of the deaf shall be unstopped, and the ears of them that hear shall hearken. Isaiah 32, 3 and Praise 35, you, 5. Jesus. The tongue of the dumb shall sing. The tongue of the stammerer shall be ready to speak plainly. Isaiah 35, 6 and 32, 4. The lame man shall leap as a heart or a deer. Isaiah 35, 6. I will recover you and make you to live. I'm ready to save you. Isaiah 38, 16 Ooh, and 20. I give power to the faint. I increase strength to them that have no might. Isaiah 40, 29. I will renew your strength. I will strengthen and help you. Isaiah 40. 31, 41, 10. To your old age and gray hairs, I'll carry you, and I will deliver you. Isaiah 46, 4. I bore your sicknesses. Isaiah 53, 4. I carried your pains. Isaiah 53, 4. I was put to sickness for you. Isaiah 53, 10. With my stripes, you are healed. Isaiah 53, 5. I will heal you. Isaiah 57, 19. You know, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Amen. Well, so far, that's 42. 42 <laughs> witnesses. Your light shall break forth as the morning, and your health shall spring forth speedily. Isaiah 58, 8. I will restore health unto you, and I'll heal you of your wounds, saith the Lord. Jeremiah 30, 17. Behold, I'll bring the city health and cure, and I'll cure you and reveal unto you the abundance of peace and truth. I'll bind up that which was broken and will strengthen that which was sick, Ezekiel 34, 16. Behold, I'll cause breath to enter into you, and you will live, and I'll put my spirit in you, and you will live, Ezekiel 37, 5 and 14. 
whithersoever the river shall come shall live, and they'll be healed, and everything shall live where the river comes. Praise Ezekiel God. 47, 9. Seek me, and you shall live. Amos 5, 4, and 6. I have arisen with healing in my wings, Malachi 4, 2. Praise God. Praise and God. we just now got to the New Testament. Did, was the scripture in there about uh, rivers of living water? When it, That's New Testament. New Testament. Those were all Old Testament. I, just I, I, I can have Testament. the New Testament. <laughs> Amen. I can have and, both. Well, let, me, let me get what I can in here in this last minute. I will, be, this New Testament, I will be thou clean, Matthew 8, 3. I took your infirmities, Matthew 8, 17. I bore your sicknesses, Matthew 8, 17. If you're sick, you need a physician. I am the Lord, your physician. Yes, amen. Matthew 9, 12, and Exodus 15, 26. I moved with compassion toward the sick, and I healed them, Matthew 14, 14. I heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease, Matthew 4, 23. According to your faith, be it done unto you, Matthew 9, 29. I give you power and authority over all unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease, Matthew 10, 1 and Luke 9. I heal them all, Matthew 12, 15 and Hebrew 13, 8. As many as touch me are made perfectly whole, Matthew 14, 36. Healing is the children's bread, Matthew 15, 26. Glory to God, hallelujah, and Jesus is Lord. Yes, you did it, you did it. Hallelujah. Not long after Kenneth and Gloria Copeland were married, they were given four acres of land in southwest Arkansas from Gloria's grandparents. As they visited their new property throughout the years, they would bring camping gear and use it as their own camping ground. The Lord began to grow their vision for one day having a house on the property. Across the highway was an abandoned house that was over a hundred years old and had belonged to a family Gloria had known as a child. It now seemed to be falling apart, but Gloria saw that it had potential. The question was, could it be moved and remain in one piece? After being turned down by one moving company, Brother Copeland found a man named Mr. Wooten to do the job. He said, everything will be all right, and it was. They successfully moved the house to the perfect spot on the property, and as Brother Copeland says, that's when the real work began. Extensive renovations were done, designed by Gloria and her mother Mary. Soon the vision the Lord gave them for the property was a reality. It's just been a marvelous place, and then as we began to grow in the ministry and, and our ministry began to develop, we would come up here and spend time in prayer and seek the Lord and get direction and, and, uh, and it, it, it became a, 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 a place of, of fellowship with Him and fellowship with our family. A life of total health is available to you. Do you know how to access it? With the Healing Promises book by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, you can discover how to tap into God's healing power to overcome any sickness or disease. Kenneth and Gloria have compiled scripture after scripture of God's healing promises to you, each one shown in four different translations. The King James Version, Amplified Bible Classic Edition, James Moffat Translation, and the New English Bible. Use it like a medicine cabinet and take your scripture daily. Healing is a promise to people of all ages. It's God's will for you to be healed right now. Make it your personal project to be well. Handwrite the verses out. Get them in your heart and speak them over yourself. Take God at his word. See yourself through the eyes of faith, healed and whole and strong. Healing Promises, a hands-on healing resource manual to help you live in divine health through the power of God's word. Discover how to tap into God's healing power. Request your free copy of Healing Promises from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. This hands-on healing manual gives practical application of God's word for healing. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. Offer good for 60 days. If you're outside the United States, shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Glory to God, we're going to send you that Healing Promises book, four different translations. That whole book is just nothing but healing promises and healing facts. Now, this is important. Let me, let me tell you this. 
There are healing promises and healing facts. By his stripes ye were healed is not a promise. That's no, a fact. That's right. Amen? Yeah. Praise that's God. That's a done deal. Each scripture, like I said, is four different translations. King James, Amplified, James Moffat, and the New English Bible. Praise God. And if you got all, you got a, a lot of them in your phone, you can go back and check them out and read them. But get them in your eyes, ears, and mouth. I mean, get them in and get them in your spirit. What we read is healing and medicine to your flesh. Glory to God. Yes, amen. It has to be appropriated by faith. Now then, go to kcm.org. That's all you got to do, and it's free, praise God, and we'll pay the postage on it, praise God. You can also download Keith Moore's book on his website. You got to get your hands on that book. I'm telling you, it's free too. Woo. Like Brother Keith says, no expense, no excuse. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Go to uh, faithtrainers.com. Father, we receive healing today. This is healing school on the air. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise God. God. We receive it. We pray for every person in the sound of our voice. And we bless you, sir. And we thank you for being our healer. You've never turned anybody thank down. You, Lord. you never said, no, I'm not going to do it today. You've got to do it. Praise not Jesus. one time did Jesus ever say that. And I thank you for it, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Download the free broadcast study notes. Amen. KCM.org slash notes. Use them to teach. Teach the very same scriptures. All of this will be on the notes, praise God. I'm so glad you could join us today. So you need to be with us tomorrow because we're going to be doing the same thing tomorrow. So until then, this is Kenneth and Gloria reminding you again that Jesus is Lord. Visit our website, kcm.org, to watch the broadcast or download the study notes free. You can also request a free copy of the broadcast on DVD, CD, or digital download. Shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Keep your faith strong in the Word and expect to see the manifestations of the Holy Ghost and fire. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Preacher. Mobile's new home for news and talk, 660 WXQW. Hi, welcome to the answers. This is Dr. Clark. I'm going to continue my series on how to waste money. We've got answers. Hi, welcome to another episode of Answers. I'm Dr. Clark, and I want to get back to the subject matter. But before we do that, I want to just take time to thank all of you all who have reached out to me by way of Facebook, those of you all who have let me know, inboxing me, letting me know that, listen, you have been blessed by this show's answer, especially the one we did the last episode about finances. I want to continue that tonight, but I just wanted to take this time to tell you thank you so, so very much. You did not have to let me know that that message did that much uh, positive impact to your life. And I want you to know I appreciate it. How not to waste money. That's what we're dealing with. How not to waste money. I believe, without hesitation or reservation, that it is God's desire that his people would manage their resources properly and as a result of that, have the financial security that they need to do all that he has called them to do. I believe 
that it's not God's desire for his people to be without. Now, I've got scripture to support that, one that comes to mind that I'm sure you're aware of. Psalms 23 that says, the Lord is my shepherd. Watch this. I shall not want. That means if God is my shepherd, I'm his sheep. There is nothing that I need I should be going without. Why is that oftentimes the case then, Dr. Clark? It is oftentimes the case because many who have been blessed with resources mismanage them. It is never God's desire for us to be without. Now, I know somebody is going to say, well, the Bible says the poor you would have with you always. It does say that, and that's a true principle. But the reality is he never said who the poor would be. So I suggest to you that you manage your resources properly. So those who are poor can benefit from your managing resources, which allows them to not go without because you have been put in a position to be a blessing to them. But you can't be a blessing to the poor, whoever they may be. And he never said who that would be. But you can be a blessing to the poor so that even in the poor state, their needs can still be met because the one, yourself, me, who has the resources are managing them properly. And if we're going to manage resources properly, then that means we cannot waste money. Last episode, we talked about the first practice to avoid. Now, whenever you're studying the scriptures, there are practices that you need to mimic, and then there are practices that you need to avoid. And one of the practices that you need to avoid, we talked about immaturity, but tonight, I want to deal with the practice that needs to be avoided, impatience. Impatience. Whenever you are impatient, you will waste money. Whenever you are impatient, you will waste money. The Bible says in Luke chapter 15, that episode with the prodigal son, as Jesus tells that parable, he lets us know that as soon as the younger son gets his resources, when he gets his loot, the Bible says he goes into a far country. Not many days after, immediately, he gets the money and he gets to moving. That is a sign of him being impatient. And there are many of you all who are watching me now. You must admit that in your life, you've wasted money because of your impatience. I know I have. There's a whole lot of things that had I just waited, I would still have wealth. I would still have money if I had just waited. Impatient. He gets his money and he gets to moving. Now, let me share with you briefly the two things that causes us to be impatient when it comes down to finances. The two things, the two reasons why in most cases, if not all, we are impatient when it comes down to finances. And remember, impatience leads to waste. Immaturity will breed impatience, and impatience, like immaturity, will lead to waste. Watch this, impatient. The first reason why this young man was impatient, and it was obvious when you read the parable in its entirety, he was impatient, watch this, because he wanted what was eventually going to come to him, he wanted it now. Let me say it this way. What he would get later, he wanted now. The Bible says, thank you, Holy Spirit, he asked the Father for his inheritance. Truth of the matter is, the inheritance belonged to him. It was his and he would have gotten it at the father's death when the father died, transition, then the younger son would have gotten his inheritance. But he could not wait till the father was dead. He wanted it now. You are being impatient with money when what you know you can get later, you demand that you have it now. Wow. 
when what you know is coming to you later, you demand to have it now. And many times in life, many times in life, we waste money because we can't wait till later. We have got to have it now. My brother, my sister, this prodigal son waste money, his resources, embarrasses the family, causes shame to come upon himself and his father's house because he was impatient. He could not wait till later. He had to have it now. And whenever you feel as though you have to have it now and you can't wait till later, you are bound to waste money because impatience means you are being emotional. Impatience means you are buying off of impulse. People make millions of dollars every day on getting people to buy off of impulse. Getting people to buy without thinking. Getting people to buy right there on the spot. Go to a car lot. And the car dealer is, is, is almost uh, demanding respectfully that you get into the car and sit down. Why? Because he wants you to smell the new car smell. He wants you to feel the leather and he wants you to feel and look at all of those fancy lights and all of the mechanism on the dashboard. Because he's trying to get you to buy now. Doesn't want you to leave out doing. You can, the, the list can go on and on of places, businesses, marketing strategies that appeal to our impatience. This boy wastes his money because he's impatient. It's going to come to him later. But he wants to have it now. Who is listening to me? Where are you in your life financially? And there's something you're ready to do right now as I speak. And the truth of the matter is God has navigated the circumstances of your life and mine that we can make this connect at this time. And what you have to agree with as I'm speaking, that what you're about to do is nothing short of you being impatient with finances. How many married couples who wanted to get married and deserve to be married, but because they couldn't wait to get enough money set aside for them to live and the wedding, they chose to spend all the money on the wedding, and then now they're worried about how they're going to live. Impatient. Buying the new car, buying a new outfit, buying a new toy. Brothers, we do that like we buy toys, you know, uh, electric hammers and all that kind of stuff that we use for about a week and then we don't even want it anymore. Impatience will always lead to it. We can get it later, but we've got to have it now. One financial analyst told me something as I got serious about my finances. He said to me, he said, uh, Dr. Clark, if you really, 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 really want to buy something, and I mean it's just an overwhelming feeling that you've got to have it, give it 30 days. And at the end of 30 days, see if you feel about that item the same way. And if you do, then, you know, perhaps decide then if you should buy it. And I've done it, and I promise you, it has saved me more money than I can imagine. Just realizing that I don't have to have it right now. Impatient. When you know you can have it later, but you are demanding that you have to have it now. Now I think I need to say this to you. Because the enemy will try to make you think that you'll never get it later. So he'll deceive you into demanding it now because you won't think you can get it later. You don't know, you may not be alive. Come on with all of that. If you don't, if you, if you don't think you're going to be alive later, then why get it now? 
That's sure enough waste. Inpatient. I can get it later, but I want it now. And you know I'm redundant, not because I think you're slow, but I want this thing to stick. Dr. Willie J. Newman, who taught his New Testament, said that constant review is the student's glue. In patience, <laughs> you can have it later, but you want it now. Here's the second thing. You are being impatient, watch this, when no sounds like not, or I'm sorry, when no sounds like never. When no sounds like never. How many times we bought things? How many times have we wasted money because we really were consumed that if it does not happen now, it won't ever happen? If it won't happen right now, then it won't ever happen. And we get caught up in this rat race of competition, watch this, with unnecessary items and things that bring no value to our lives running around like a, a mice in a maze just going foolish because we are impatient no does not mean never no means no but it doesn't mean never when you study the scriptures, one of the things you will discover, and I think this is one of the, the awesome things about God. When you study the scriptures, you'll discover that God majored in doing things at the time when people thought it was too late. He majored. He majored in blessing people. He majored in performing miracles. When the majority of the people, if not all, were convinced that it would never turn around. He shows us that no today does not mean never. Lazarus is sick. Word gets to Jesus. That Lazarus whom you love is sick. Jesus shows up. Lazarus is dead. And he's been dead for four days. The word and the atmosphere in the town when Jesus shows up is why are you coming now? It's too late. He's dead. He's been dead for four days. Sister said, by now he stinks. Jesus says, because he's dead. Because I didn't show up when you wanted me to. Because when you requested me to come, I said by my actions, no. You think it meant never. Show me where you're lady. You know the story. Right there in John chapter 11. Jesus walks to the tomb. He says, roll the stone away. And when they roll the stone away, he calls Lazarus forth. And Lazarus, come, Lazarus comes back to life. Because no does not mean never. And the Bible is salt and pepper. Calvary. And the redemptive work, hallelujah, that Jesus Christ did for us. Look as if God was saying no. And that no looked like it was really being interpreted never. What do you mean, Bishop Clark? The Jews were expecting him to come and overthrow the Roman government. They were expecting him to come and establish the kingdom right there in his time. And he said to them, no, that's not what I've come to do. I didn't come to establish my kingdom in the way you think. He dies and on the third day gets back up from the grave and 40 days later he ascends up to heaven and he tells them, he says, listen, go and witness to others. Bring them into the kingdom that is coming. Isn't that what we pray? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Which means, watch this, that God will set up his kingdom he said no then, but no does not mean never. And what God did in the sense of, of establishing his kingdom here on earth, now it's in the hearts of men, but he comes back to establish his kingdom on earth. And what he did with Lazarus, bringing Lazarus back from the grave, is what he desires to do with our finances. 
But we cannot be impatient. We cannot think that no means never. Just because I can't buy it this paycheck does not mean I can't get it next paycheck. Just because I can't buy Pookie the toy this Christmas does not mean I can't get it next Christmas. Just because it's not happening for me right now, the goodies and the creature comforts are not, I'm not able to afford them, afford them right now, does not mean I never will. Don't let the devil deceive you. Don't be caught up in this web of foolishness thinking that no means never. Don't be impatient. The prodigal son was impatient. He goes to a far country. He leaves the father's care. He leaves the father's uh, 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 supervision. He leaves the father's guidance because he is impatient. My brother, my sister, take a moment. Stop. Oh, I'm serious about this. Stop. And ask yourself, is this something I have to have now? Or can I get this later? Am I of the mindset that no today means never? God's people have been too long without the resources we need to live the life that we desire to live, to live the life he has no problem with us living, using his resources that he's given us to be a blessing to the kingdom of God and expand his ministry. But yet, we can't do that because we've been impatient. I encourage you. I, I beseech you. Don't be impatient. Because when you are impatient like the prodigal son, you will find yourself wasting money. The Bible says he got his goods and he got out to the far country. Isn't it amazing that he had to leave the father's house to do whatever he wanted to do? In maturity, breathe in patience. And like in maturity, that leads to waste. Impatience leads to waste. Watch this now. In maturity leads to waste because it is a mindset. In maturity is a mindset that manifests itself in actions. Listen to me good. When I'm immature, it's, it's a reflection on my thinking that is manifested in my behavior. But when I am impatient, it speeds up that process. In other words, immaturity starts me down the road to waste. But impatient is me running down that road. In maturity, I'm on the road to wasting all of my resources. I'm walking. I'm immature. I'm wasting money. I'm walking. But when I become impatient, I start running then. And I get to waste quicker with my impatience. Don't be impatient. You can wait. You can wait. It's not going to kill you. Anything worth having is worth waiting for. Get your resources lined up. Get your credit together. Put everything. Listen, there's some things you have to pay. Bills and necessities of life. No, I'm not talking about that. But those other things, put pause on it. Wait. Wait to take the vacation. Wait. Wait to buy the new car. Wait to buy the new outfit. Wait. Wait on the wedding. I know I just made somebody mad then. Wait. Don't get impatient. If it's for you, it's going to happen. You don't have to get in the rush. I want to pray again. I want to pray again tonight because, you know, the overwhelming response I got from the last show 
it, it just, I, I mean, I knew the Lord was telling me to share this with you, but I did not know, I couldn't fathom how many people needed to hear this thing about money. And I know it's a touchy subject. And you're used to the preacher telling you, this is how you ought to give money, you have to get. And I'm not, you know, doubting that because it takes money to do things. But I can't teach you how to give money and not teach you how to save money. Because you can't give what you don't have. And you'll never have it if you waste it. And you'll waste it if you're impatient. Let's pray. Father, in your name, I thank you so much again. I thank you, dear God, for my brother, my sister, who's listening to me now. And I pray that what I have said from my heart has touched theirs. And that they, Father God, would begin to be patient, to wait. Before they spend, before they use their resources, that they would really ponder, if this is something that I can get later, why should I demand it right now? And then, if you say no, tell them, let them see that does not mean never. In the name of Jesus, I pray for them as well as myself that we would avoid the practice of being impatient. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Answers. May the Lord bless you and keep you. You have a great day. You deserve it. Hi, this is Dr. Clark and welcome to Answers. Listen, before we get into the show tonight, there are many of you all who have called and uh, contacted us by way of Facebook email asking us, you know, how is church service, when does church service start? So for those of you all who are interested in meeting me in the sanctuary and not just watching me on TV, here's a clip from one of our Sunday morning experiences. I pray it blesses you. Seasons food. I don't care how the food tastes. Once you put salt in, it changes. So never comes in contact with food and the food remains the same. So never comes in contact with food. I don't care how garlicky, garlicky it is. I don't care how uh, uh, cheesy it is. If you put salt in it, Salt's going to be the dominating influence. Some of you all have been in restaurants with people before they even taste the food. <laughs> Jesus says to his followers, he said, you'll salt the earth. When salt does the food, you ought to do to people. So I came this morning. And for the next 15 minutes, it's 1210, I came this morning, and I just came to tell you how you can be and stay salty. <laughs> you're going to maintain your influence if you're going to convince people to do and do here positive sense. You have to have the right attitude before people. The right attitude, the right attitude. Where do you get that from, from that passage? Well, when you study the context, Jesus has just finished teaching his disciples about the attitude, the beatitudes, or the attitudes to be. So he spends the first 12 verses teaching them of how they ought to behave and how they ought to present themselves. And then he says, you're the soul of the earth. Oh man, I'm teaching it here. He says, if you're going to maintain influence with people, you have to have the right attitude and the right actions before people. The name? Everybody get down there. Get down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to teach you today how spiritually you can shake it out of salt. Spiritually, 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 spiritually. spiritually. Now, once again, I said something that crossed your mind when you saw me with that salt. Watch this. That's it. Watch, watch this. I have to have the right attitude before people and the right action before people. In other words, when I am before people and I live among people, watch this. As a 
child of God, I have to let people see me respond, not react. Yes. I lose my influence when stuff happens in life and I don't respond, I react. So tuned in to Life Television Network, your number one Christian station. Welcome to a Taking the Kingdom Special Moments broadcast. This broadcast is in honor of Prophet Blake's and Lady Lois's 44 years of dedicated service to the Kingdom of God. Now, let's go into the sanctuary. Tonight, I want to talk to you for a few minutes tonight from uh, the subject, Angry Hot temper. <laughs> How to control it. Angry. Um, there's so many people that are out of control. They have no control over their temper. Number one, when one allows himself to become angry, he's really out of control. Now all anger is not in itself sinful. There are times when God is angry. <laughs> times that when he is angry. Angry is, um, is a mental unbalance. Temporarily insane unless that you are in control but the average person who gets angry or out of control and you must as Christians we are human beings and there are times that we get angry. But then you know how to control it. Now you control anger by not trusting yourself. 
That time when you get angry, it's best to go and allow yourself to regather itself. Don't say what you want to say. That's when you're angry, it's always wrong. Something happened when you get angry. Your choice of words changes. You'll say some things that you surprise yourself. Huh? Somebody looking down now and says, Lord, I'm angry right now. <laughs> I, I'm, I want to write a book on this. Keeping yourselves within control. See, what happens when you get angry? You always want to use your mouth. And my grandmother said, nothing hates a duck but his beard. Yes, sir. If I keep my mouth, you will never know what's on the inside. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Angry, hot tempered. You got to make sure that there are times that you need to pray before speaking. Somebody say, think twice before speaking one. Don't speak too fast. And there are some of you all have no control over your mind. You're ready for anything come up at any time. You're saying, start it and I'll beat you keeping it up. But you cannot do that as children of God. For one thing, a child of God must always manifest that I'm in control. God Almighty. Look at, look at Psalm number... 7 and verse 11. Psalm number 7 and verse 11. All right, baby. Y'all see that? You do see that. That's why I tell you, it's not always sinful to be angry God judges the what the righteous wait a minute wait just one second let me just get this page and hold it down God judges the righteous and God is what anger with what the wicked win every day every day talk about me yes Weak becomes sorrowful. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And the weak, the weak head become braggadocious. Yes, sir. Yes. Right. That's right. The weak head act if though that God does not exist. Yeah. Huh? That's right. That's it. Hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. So God is angry yes. with the wicked. Yes, yes. The wicked will be destroyed, yes. Yes. but the weak will be strengthened. Yes. Yes. Somebody, somebody, somebody. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Angry, see. A lot of people uh, 
wait until they get angry to tell you what's on their mind. Ben wanted to tell you that a long time. But I had to wait until I got angry to do it because see, you can't hold me responsible because after all I was angry. Are y'all understand? Temporarily insane. You know, a lot of people get drunk to do that. Ben wanted to tell you. But I had to hide, have something to hide down. Have I got a witness to see? I didn't mean to say that, but you made me angry. I really didn't mean to say that, but you made me angry. See, you're never supposed to lose control. Even when you're angry. Because anger is a test of strength. It is to show you how strong you are. Do I have a witness yet? How can I control myself under a spell of anger? How can I control? Can I maintain my Christian calmness? I'm angry now, but can I maintain? Now, sometimes maintaining it is to give yourself a walk. If walking will keep you in control, then go on and walk. Are you understanding what I'm saying? If you need period to cool off, God taught you how to do that. When Adam let him down, he waited until it cooled. Waited until he calmed down. And then came down. Because if he had came down in the heat of the day, uh, that would have been destruction. But when it came down, when it cooled down, when it cooled off, he came down that he might drop a ladder for man to go up. Thank the Lord. I don't believe y'all hear what I am saying. Learning how to control. Learn how to not say everything come up. Some people say, well, you know, whatever comes up, comes out. You're a foolish, you're a foolish person. You've been not letting everything come out, comes up. There are a whole lot of things that comes is in. Better not come out of there. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah to you. Hallelujah. Why? Because if it came out, I would reflect upon my Christian relationship. Yes, sir. There are some things that comes to my mind that I better not allow come out. You better hear what I'm saying to you. Y'all don't mind me talking. All right, all right, right. We're going to talk then since you want me to talk. So, learning how to do that. Many things, many jobs have been lost. Because we, kid, we wasn't able to keep our mind. And because we weren't able to keep our mouths, we have never been able to replace the quality of job sense. Yes. Learning how to control anger. Learn how to do that. Learn how to see it's bad when you don't have no self-control. Mm. Learning to have self-control. Many women have lost good husbands. 
because somebody said don't take that had no control over thy anger so he made her angry and she lost the best man in the world but she only realized that after she realized that she lost it see are you understanding yes sir yes sir Angry destroys, and it will destroy you. The first thing it does, it destroys the qualities that are on the inside of you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. <laughs> and when you lose that inability. You have no control on that out ability. See, because it's not so much of anger as it is what it causes. It will cause depression. It will cause low self-esteem. Yes, 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 it will. Because it'll call you to stoop lower than what you are. Somebody, somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Yeah, he made me angry. And you wind up saying he made me angry. But you see, you 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 you, you can't live with anger. So you ought to do something that you can live with. Yes, sir. There you go. Don't allow a temporary thing to mess you up for life. Hallelujah. Amen. So my temporary feeling has messed me up for my whole lifetime. Learning to be in control. Learning to be God became angry with the wicked. And you got to understand that, see. Because a fellow is weak doesn't mean he's weak yet. Peter was wicked, weak enough to deny him. But he became one of the greatest apostles. Somebody on the shot how to live. That's why he said, the weak in me just say you're strong. He said, let the weak say. And the reason why he said that, baby, is because what you say is what you get. If you say I'm weak, you get weaker. So you're giving the devil something to work with. But if you say you're strong, even though you're weak, you got something to pull up by. Somebody, 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 somebody. God was, uh, look at the uh, first king chapter uh, 11 and verse 9. Look at first king chapter 11 verse 9. Uh, Y'all don't mind me just talking a little bit. Uh, I want to get your permission. Hallelujah. Oh yes. Look at the 11th chapter and the 9th verse. 11 chapter 9. Y'all got it? Boy, y'all something. I tell you. This makes me feel good to see y'all just able to find those pages just like that. Just find them just like that. 11 and 9. Do y'all see that? All righty. What did it say? And the Lord was angry with Solomon. God was angry with him. 
Because his what? Heart was turned from the Lord, God of Israel. Watch your heart. Watch your heart. See, you're in church, but where? Where is your heart? You're singing, you're shouting, but where is your heart? His heart had turned. And that strange thing about a man, when he turned, when he leaves God, he always turned from. So one never get weak turning toward God. He always get weak turning away from so God was angry with him. And you know why God was angry? It because he had invested so much in something. To see the wisest king that God had ever given to become the biggest fool the world have ever known. Some other the shot had lived. What happened to Solomon? What happened to Solomon? Number one, Solomon got him a woman from every ethnic, every background that were. This is why he ran a peaceable kingdom. Because when a nation rose up to fight him, he said, remember, I got your children. Your Come on. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> remember, I'm married to your daughters. But when he made the mistake, it wasn't the women that he had. Not that God endorses that. But it wasn't the women's, the thing that defiled him, he brought all of those strange gods in Israel and started worshiping those idols. Y'all better come on here and shout hallelujah. Y'all don't mind me talking. So the Lord said, I'm angry with you, man. What he says? I am going to do it. Hmm. The Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord and the God of Israel, which had what appeared unto him twice. He went to him twice. And had commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods but he kept not that which the Lord commanded he was disobedient he refused to keep what God commanded and one thing about God he'll give you something he'll take it away from you wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon for as much as this is done of thee and thou hast not kept my covenant and my stature which I have commanded thee I will surely rend mean take it away from you the kingdom from thee and will give it to thy servant yes, yes. I'm going to take you down from being a king to a servant and I'm going to take a servant and bring him up to king you're not going to pray with me are you <laughs> Yes, Lord. My God. See, don't take God long to pull you down and put somebody else up there. No, sir. Not long enough. It don't take long. No, sir. Because you would not obey. Because you refuse to listen to me. I'm going to take the privilege away from you. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to take your king's seat. And I'm going to set one of your seven in it. That's humiliating, boy. For God to take your subject and put him over you. That's right. 
but he would not listen. He would not obey. And it angered God. Somebody ought to shout out me. And somebody said it's bad to fall in the hands of an angry God. It's awful to fall in the hands of an angry God. See, the more given, the more required. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. If God has given you more, He's expecting more. Look at Pastor now. See, this is what you have to watch. There's a spirit in anger. And if you don't take control of it, it will ultimately destroy you. You're not going to pray with me, are you? Now, a lot of children are born with this spirit. Because during the whole pregnancy, that mother was staying angry. Man, I'm so glad I didn't, wish some of y'all didn't give birth to me to crying in a shame. I said, Ooh, Lord. You know, your personality trickle down in your child. You nasty and hateful. That child going to come here nasty and hateful. And he wonder why he get that from me? He got it from you. But if you have a nice, kind disposition while carrying that child, that's why you need to be prayerful. Some of the shout hallelujah. You need to be prayerful so God can shape your attitude. Join the New Home family of churches along with the prophets, sons, and daughters from around the world in a celebration to remember as we honor Prophet Blakes and Lady Lois for 44 years of dedicated service to the kingdom. Starting Thursday, June 4th, a night of reflection with Pastor Robert C. Blakes Jr. and musical guest Nicole Slack-Jones. A night of praise with our musical guests, the Rocks of Harmony and the New Home Mass Choir. Morning Glory, Sunday with Pastor Samuel R. Blakes. And the culminating spotlight, a night of honor, Sunday evening with Pastor Dale Sanders. Mark your calendars for June 4th through the 7th, 2009 in New Orleans. Share in this glorious event as we honor God's prophet for his years of commitment to building the lives of others. Plan to be there for this 44th year celebration. For additional information, call the Media Center at 1-800-633-4274. Local callers, call the Prayer Center at 504-569-8206. Don't forget to attend the Day of Gratitude, Miracle Service, and a luncheon with the Prophet and First Lady in the beautiful Upper Room. Tickets are $30 per person. Saturday, June 6th at 9 a.m. immediately after the Miracle Service. Covenant Partners and Friends in Ministry, thank you for your love and support to the ministry. Today's broadcast is available on CD or DVD. Order your copy today. Remember to ask about the Prophet's new catalog or log on to ProphetBlakes.com. Thank you for your love and support to the ministry. Robert C. Blake Senior Prayer Center. God's healing place for those who are ready to give up. Experience spirit-filled and anointed prayer partners as they minister biblical principles from God's Word. Call today. Prayer partners are available now, 504-569-8205, or log on to www.prophetblakes.com to submit your prayer request. Remember, your breakthrough is a phone call away. 
Become a covenant partner with Prophet Robert C. Blake Sr. Tap into the prophetic anointing upon his life by sowing a monthly seed of $25 or more. All faithful partners will receive a monthly special moments message prepared by Prophet Blake's. Also enjoy your personalized framed photo of the Prophet interceding for his faithful partners in ministry. Thank you for your sowing into the Prophet's life through your love and faithful support. The vision is unfolding as God uses Prophet Blake's to minister healing and deliverance to the nations. Thank you for tuning in to the Taking the Kingdom broadcast. Robert C. Blake Senior Ministries is supported by faithful covenant partners around the world. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Preacher. Attention to all on the Gulf Coast and to those that are far and near. The time has come for the 2018 International Gulf Coast World Convention, Wednesday, July 25th through Friday, July 27th. Be there live and in person to experience and be a part of this dynamic convention and convocation. Our resounding thing is God is doing a new thing. This is an extraordinary event and you want to be there in the building to experience it live. Get ready to celebrate. Get ready to worship and get ready to receive an impartation of God's word that will cause your life to never be the same. Wednesday, July 25th is Men's Night and Dr. Henry Roberts Jr. will be our speaker. Thursday, July 26th is Women's Night and Dr. Robert C. Blakes of New Home Family Worship Center will be our speaker. July 27th is Youth and Family Night. Dr. Todd Hall of Shabbat Ministries House of Praise will be bringing a word from the Lord. Also, we're excited to present two powerful impact sessions. Thursday night at 6.30 with Bishop Harry Thomas and Friday